think you're beginning to understand how dangerous River Tam is. That girl will rain destruction down on you and your ship. In the cosmic web of 2005 Serenity, director Joss Whedon weaved a thrilling space western and a seamless continuation of his cult hit TV series Firefly. The ensemble cast featuring Nathan Fillion, Alan Tudyuk, Adam Baldwin, Gina Therese, Summer Glau, Marina Baccarin, Jill State, Ron Glass and Sean Mayer reprised their roles from the show, transporting us back to the year 2517. Here we rendezvous with the crew of the eponymous Firefly-class spaceship Serenity a motley crew of smugglers and veterans of the Unification War. Led by their captain, a rebel from the defeated independent side, their lives of cargo running and skirting the law took a dramatic turn with the arrival of a psychic passenger with a perilous secret. Whedon's feature film directorial debut was a resurrection of his 2002 television brainchild, with the plot picking up the threads from Firefly's finale, thrusting the Serenity crew back into the jaws of danger. The Alliance, a formidable central government, dispatches a relentless assassin to capture River Tam, the enigmatic and valuable passenger aboard Serenity. And for over a year, our heroes have been eluding capture, but this latest chase ups the ante. With a relentless killer on their tail, played by Chiwetel Iofor, called the Operative, leaving a trail of bodies in his wake, the stakes begin to soar. The essence of Serenity lies not just in its riveting action and space escapades, but also in its exploration of camaraderie, loyalty, and the quest for truth. As the crew unravels the mystery of River Tam's significance, the film morphs into a gripping battle for survival and understanding. Whedon's screenplay is a masterclass in balancing humor, tension, character, and heart in a universe that's as expansive as it's emotionally resonant. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. And today, it's my pleasure to dive into one of my favorite properties with a look at the show and what made it great. The film, its characters, the Pax Virus and Reavers, and the meaning of its ending. Do you know what your sin is, smell? Oh, hell. I'm a fan of all seven. <clears throat> the show debuted in 2002 and quickly developed a cult following for its unique blend of genres and compelling storytelling. Set in the year 2517, it depicted a future where humans had colonized a new star system after Earth became uninhabitable. What made Firefly special among many things was its pioneering fusion of science fiction with Western themes. The series featured spaceships and futuristic technology alongside elements typical of Westerns like outlaws and frontier towns and was renowned for its world building and well developed characters. The crew of the spaceship Serenity, each with their own backstories and complexities, created a dynamic and engaging ensemble cast. How much did they offer you to sell out me and River on Ariel? That's crazy talk. I can kill you with my brain. Whedon's writing was another highlight. The dialogue was witty, humorous, filled with memorable lines, and incorporated a distinctive language style that mixed old world phrases, different languages, and futuristic slang, adding to its unique atmosphere. Now this is all the money Niska gave us in advance. We're not thieves, but we are thieves. Point is, we're not taking what's his. I want you down, and the last thing you see will be my blade. Darn. Firefly touched on themes of freedom, government control, and individualism presenting a universe where the Alliance exerted tight control over the outer planets, leading to tensions and resistance. Despite its innovation and growing fan base, the show faced significant challenges from the start, primarily due to decisions made by Fox, the network that was airing the show. The company basically released the episodes out of their intended order. In fact, the pilot, which was designed to introduce the characters and setting, was not the first episode broadcast. Understandably, this confused new viewers and made it difficult for them to understand the show's context and narrative. It was also placed in a challenging time slot and frequently had to make way for sporting events, which disrupted its ability to gain a consistent audience. The marketing was another misstep. Fox promoted Firefly as a more action-oriented series, which didn't accurately represent its character-driven focus and thematic depth. As a result of all of this, it was cancelled after just one season comprising of 14 episodes, with only 11 of those episodes even airing during the original broadcast. Despite its short run, it garnered a passionate and dedicated following, and the cancellation was met with significant outcry from the fanbase, known as Browncoats. 
Fans launch campaigns to save the show, including letter-writing campaigns, online petitions, and the purchase of DVD sets to demonstrate the show's viability. Its untimely cancellation by Fox, despite a strong fan base and critical acclaim, is often cited as a significant misstep in television history. However, the legacy of Firefly continued with the release of Serenity, which provided closure to the show's storylines and characters. Humanity's tale in this universe unfolds against the backdrop of depleted Earth resources, leading to the colonization and terraforming of a new star system. Governed by the Alliance, a facade of peace hides its authoritarian grip. On the fringes of this controlled universe, away from the core planets, a rugged frontier justice prevails. It's here that the crew of Serenity, a band of outlaws, navigate a precarious existence, dodging both the heavy hand of the Alliance and Reavers, savage, cannibalistic humans haunting the outer reaches of space. She's not just a psychic. Given the right trigger, this girl is a living weapon. She has her lucid periods. All our subjects are conditioned for combat, but River, she's a creature of extraordinary grace. We're effectively plunged into action with Simon Tam, orchestrating a daring rescue of his sister River from an Alliance facility. Their escape, however, is revealed to be a mere recording, scrutinized by the operative, an enigmatic Alliance agent endowed with vast authority. The operative's brutality is quickly demonstrated in a chilling encounter with Dr. Matthias, the head of the facility. Accusing him of a grave security lapse, he dispatches the guards using a sword, an archaic yet terrifying weapon choice. As a master of combat and psychological warfare, he then uses a precision pressure point strike to paralyze him, leading to a grisly demise as Matthias impels himself on the upright sword. There's no shame in this. In a man's death, a man who has done fine works. We're making a better world. As the plot thickens, it becomes evident that River's psychic abilities, specifically her inadvertent gleaning of sensitive information from Alliance officials, are at the heart of the conflict. The operative's quest to retrieve her and the secrets she holds kickstarts an intense and perilous chase. <laughs> Young miss, I need you to go to work now. Where are you hiding, little girl? We're then catapulted into the world of space heists and harrowing escapes aboard the titular spaceship and introduced to our main characters. We have Captain Malcolm Reynolds, the heart of Serenity, a rugged, morally complex hero. Both the show and film delve into his cynicism, born from a lost war and a disillusioned past, yet he retains his innate sense of justice and protection for his crew. He's a man effectively torn between his survival instincts and his underlying heroism. This is the captain. We have a little problem with our entry sequence, so we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. Then there's Zoe Washbourne, his loyal first mate and a warrior. Strong, unflinching, yet not without vulnerability, her marriage with Wash demonstrates her softer side. We crashing again? Talk to your husband. Meal prepped? Good to go, sir. Just loading her up. Their pilot, Hoban Washbourne, serves as a comedic relief, but is also the emotional anchor for Zoe and the crew, his light-hearted nature balancing the more serious tones. This landing is gonna get pretty interesting. Define interesting. Oh God, oh God, we're all gonna die? Jane Cobb is a tough mercenary figure with questionable morals, given moments where his deeper layers are revealed. His loyalty, swayed by self-interest, is often tested, providing insight into his personal code and sense of belonging within the crew. I don't plan on any shooting taking place during this job. Yeah, well, what you plan and what takes place ain't ever exactly been similar. The adorable Kaylee Free is the soul of Serenity, portrayed as optimistic and kind-hearted. Her growing affection for Simon, evolving her character beyond the ship's mechanic. Don't mind the captain and Simon. They'll be back where you can spit. Well, not that you spit. Simon Tam's arc revolves around his protective nature over River and his budding relationship with Kaylee. He essentially gave up an eminent medical career and turned his back on the Alliance and his parents, who voluntarily gave his sister up to them to save her. Bruce. Now, River, stay behind the others. If there's fighting, you drop to the floor or run away. It's okay to leave them to die. When it comes to River Tam, she's basically central to the plot, her transformation from a troubled, mysterious psychic to a powerful individual being key to the crew's journey. Her character effectively symbolizes innocence corrupted, but also the strength to overcome and reclaim agency. Hey, little one. Do you understand your part in all this? Do you? The Serenity, while en route to another job, illustrates the perfect blend of disrepair and determination. As the ship battles atmospheric re-entry, it sheds its primary buffer panel like an old skin, a clear sign of its dire need for repairs. Their venture is a daring bank robbery, orchestrated to fill the crew's coffers. Mal, along with Jane and Zoe, is joined by River in this escapade. 
River's inclusion is a necessity for a continued passage on the ship, and their target, the payroll of an outer planet security company financed by the Alliance. Do you understand what I have gone through to keep River away from the Alliance? I do. The fact we here have been courteous enough to keep to our own selves. Put this crew together with the promise of work. Come a day there won't be room for naughty men like us to slip about at all. Aware that such crimes in the far reaches of space go largely unreported, the crew proceed with a blend of audacity and desperation. Despite the haphazard landing, the heist unfolds with a mix of tension, humor, and triumph, and River's telepathic abilities play a pivotal role, sensing an impending Reaver raid and steering the crew away from imminent danger. You know In a moment of grim decisiveness, Mal orders the bank's patrons to hide in the vault for safety, and the escape from the bank is more intense than the heist itself. In a chilling act of brutal mercy, Mal shoots a man pleading to join them, sparing him from a fate worse than death at the hands of the Reavers. Luckily, the nail-biting chase ends with Wash swooping in to save them. Post heist, tensions mount aboard the Serenity, Simon is incensed at the captain for endangering his sister, and his discontent brews into a decision to leave once they reach Beaumont. Weary of Simon's constant disapproval, the captain agrees. Seems I remember a talk about you giving orders on my boat. Well, we're off your boat, just as soon as River gets her share of the bounty. Here the film begins to delve into the existential and emotional depths of space life. As the crew dispose of a fallen reaver, a moment of reflection ensues. Jane, ever the pragmatist, questions the very meaning of their existence, while Kaylee offers a legend about Reavers, once men, now lost to the madness at the edge of the solar system. Shepard Book said they was men, reached the edge of space, saw a vasty nothingness, and went bibbledy over it. Her words echo the loneliness of space, a theme that resonates deeply within the crew, particularly with Mal, whose growing detachment is causing ripples of concern. Kaylee's insight basically draws a parallel between Mal's emotional trajectory and the Reavers, she fears his increasing distance might drive the crew apart, as it did with Simon, River, and Inara, his previous lover. Zoe also confronts him about the harsh decisions he's been making, particularly about leaving a man to the Reavers during their escape, and Mal's response is steeped in pragmatic grimness. The ship is in tatters, their reputation tarnished, and their financial straits dire. His choices, though morally grey, are driven by survival. In the time of war, we would have never left a man stranded. Maybe that's why we lost. Zoe reminds him of their wartime principles, they never left anyone behind, yet Mal's reply is tinged with bitter realism, suggesting that such ideals may have contributed to their defeat. Upon reaching Beaumont, the Tams prepare to disembark, a decision tinged with sadness, and River, enigmatic as ever, hints at dangers not just to herself and Simon, but for the entire crew. Here personal tensions begin to flare. Kaylee laments Simon's obliviousness to her affections and criticizes Mal for not fostering a more welcoming atmosphere. Mal's retort that Simon's lack of response might indicate a lack of feelings is met with a sharp comeback from Kaylee about Mal's own unexpressed feelings for Inara. If I truly wanted someone bad enough, it wouldn't be a thing the verse could stop me from going to her. Tell that to Inara. In a riveting sequence with intrigue and unexpected turns, the crew rendezvous with their clients, the Rample brothers, Fanti and Mingo, to divvy up the spoils from the heist. Trouble brews when the brothers demand more but this financial squabble quickly becomes the least of Mal's worries when River becomes the centre of a startling and violent outburst. Mesmerised by a fruity OT bar's advertisement, she launches into an inexplicable yet ferocious attack on the bar's patrons. Miranda. Surprisingly, despite her slight frame, River displays extraordinary combat prowess, incapacitating everyone, including the burly Jane without sustaining a scratch. In a frantic scramble, Mal retrieves his gun, only to find himself at the business end of River's barrel. Just as the tension reaches its peak, Simon intervenes with a cryptic phrase that instantly renders River unconscious. The moment reveals the depth of River's conditioning by the Alliance. She's not just a psychic, but an unstoppable killer. Despite his shock and anger at harboring a living weapon, Mal decides to allow them to remain aboard Serenity as they sought insight from Mr. Universe, a reclusive techno geek living with his robotic wife. His analysis of the security footage reveals that River's violent outburst was triggered by a subliminal message hidden in the advertisement, a message broadcast widely across the Alliance. 
He also notes that River whispered the name Miranda before attacking, adding another layer of mystery to the narrative. Additionally, he points out the peculiar lack of official reporting on the incident and the high-level Alliance clearance required to view the footage. It's Alliance, it's high military. Do you all know what it is you're carrying? And so, haunted by the spectre of Alliance pursuit, they seek refuge in the Haven Mining Colony, where they reunite with Shepard Book, a priest and former crewmate aboard the Serenity. Although his role here is limited, Shepard serves as their moral compass, and his interactions with Mao provide depth, offering philosophical guidance while hinting at his mysterious past with the Alliance. Book's wisdom and insight into the ways of the Alliance prove invaluable, especially his forewarning about the operative. They'll come at you sideways. The sort of man they're like to send believes hard, kills, and never asks why. As the antagonist, the operative is a complex character. He's calm and philosophically driven to his actions, and his belief in a greater good through force provide a compelling contrast to Mao. In a moment of introspection, Book challenges the captain, questioning his decision to take Simon and River back aboard. He suggests that Mao's actions are rooted not in strategy, but in a deeper moral compass, a need to believe in something, if not in God, then in some form of righteousness or purpose. I ain't looking for help from on high. When I talk about belief, why do you always assume I'm talking about God? Malcolm then receives a call from Inara, another member of Serenity's eclectic family, now residing in a companion training house, portrayed as independent, strong-willed, and compassionate. Her relationship with Malcolm, a complex dance filled with unspoken feelings and tension. Got some of your stuff in the trunk. Drop oh, I, di I didn't mean to leave stuff. I didn't look through the stuff. Their conversation, laced with awkward politeness and a conspicuous absence of their usual bickering, leads Mal and Zoe to suspect a trap. Nevertheless, they resolve to visit her, driven by a sense of duty to protect one of their own. Their fears are validated upon discovering that Inara has been coerced by the cold and calculating Alliance operative. I offer money, you'll play the man of honor. I ask you to do what is right, you'll play the brigand. I have no stomach for games. In a tense confrontation, he attempts to negotiate River's surrender, but a clever ruse by Inara allows her and Mal to narrowly escape and return to Serenity undetected. The Alliance isn't some evil empire. This is not the Grand Arena. That's not incense. The plot takes another twist when River, in a moment of heightened psychic awareness, reveals the significance of the word Miranda. It's actually a remote planet, once thought lost in a terraforming accident. River's exposure to Alliance secrets subconsciously unearths something mysterious and potentially damning about Miranda, leading them to contemplate a perilous journey to the planet, which lies deep in Riva territory. Recognizing the suicidal nature of such a trip, they initially opt for caution, returning to the safety of Haven and the guidance of Shepard. But their return to the mining colony reveals a harrowing sight. The outpost, once a sanctuary, lies in ruins, decimated by Alliance forces. The loss is compounded by the revelation that other sanctuaries for the crew have also been destroyed. I don't care what you believe. Just believe. In a chilling message, the operative claims responsibility for the carnage, vowing to continue his ruthless campaign until River is surrendered. The ultimatum triggers a drastic response from Captain Reynolds, who commands a horrific transformation of the Serenity into a grotesque mimicry of a River ship. The crew is effectively tasked with painting and mutilating the hull, rigging a dangerous radiation leak from the engine, arming their previously weaponless vessel with a settler's cannon and the morbid adornment of dead bodies on the prow. His orders, delivered with furious resolve, leave no room for dissent. His determination, underscored when he unflinchingly shoots an Alliance soldier emerging from the downed ship. There's a lot of fine ways to die. I ain't waiting for the Alliance to choose mine. As the Serenity embarks on its perilous journey to Miranda, they navigate through a fleet of Reaver vessels undetected, a testament to the effectiveness of their grim disguise. But upon arrival, they're met with an eerie, unsettling calm. The planet, terraformed and seemingly Earth-like, is hauntingly silent, and the cities and streets, devoid of life, are scattered with corpses. Please, God, make me a stone. She is starting to damage my calm. Jane! She's right! This whole world's dead for no reason. The absence of violence or disease makes the scene even more baffling and chilling. It basically appears as though the population simply laid down and died, a mystery that deepens the enigma surrounding the planet and River's connection to it. It's here they uncover a disturbing secret that lies at the heart of the Miranda mystery. Stumbling upon a 12-year-old Alliance search and rescue log, they learn about a disastrous experiment gone wrong. It isn't what we thought. There's been no war here, and no terraforming event. The environment is stable. The Alliance, in a misguided attempt to create a utopian, violence-free society, administered a chemical known as G23 Paxilon Hydrochlorate, or PAX, to the inhabitants of Miranda. Intended to suppress aggression, 
Pax instead had a devastatingly lethargic effect on the majority, leading them to abandon all aspects of life and simply die in a state of passive non-existence. They stopped going to work, eating. There's 30 million people here and they all just let themselves die. Worse than that is the revelation that a minuscule fraction of the population, about 30,000 of the 30 million people there, reacted in the opposite manner. These unfortunate souls changed into hyper-aggressive, mentally unstable beings, engaging in self-mutilation, cannibalism, and other unspeakable violence, with the recording effectively revealing the horrifying origins of the Reavers. About a tenth of a percent of the population had the opposite reaction to the Pax. Their aggressor response increased beyond madness. The entire crew is deeply affected, but for Captain Mao, the discovery strikes a particularly resonant note. It embodies the very tyranny and overreach the brown coats supposed, the Alliance's hubris in believing they could engineer a better society, and their ruthless disregard for individual autonomy. It effectively rekindles a long dormant fire, a belief in a cause greater than mere survival, and is a poignant callback to his days as a brown coat, fighting for freedom and self-determination against an overbearing regime. The Battle of Serenity Valley, a symbol of loss and disillusionment for Mao, is contrasted with this new, invigorated sense of purpose. Here, Serenity transcends its space western confines, delving into themes of morality, the dangers of unchecked power, and the rediscovery of lost ideals in the face of overwhelming truth. Parliament buried it, and it stayed buried until we ever dug it up. Somebody has to speak for these people. As sure as I know anything, I know this. They will try again. So no more running. I aim to misbehave. It's also important to note the transformation into a reaver is depicted as more than just a chemical reaction triggered by the Pax experiment. The episode Bushwhacked implied that witnessing their brutal acts can so profoundly traumatize a person that their psyche shatters, eventually triggering the same alteration. Their level of cognition and sentience remains a puzzle wrapped in a nightmare. While they possess the ability to operate starships and weapons, indicating some retention of their pre-transformation skills, their behavior is devoid of rationality or fear. They're not just monsters, but a tragic consequence of a flawed utopian experiment gone terribly wrong, raising questions about the nature of sanity, the impact of extreme trauma, and the thin line separating civilization from savagery. Given this discovery, the crew hatch a daring plan to expose the dark secret with help from Mr. Universe. Do we have a plan? Mr. Universe. They're gonna see this coming. No, they're not gonna see this coming. However, their plan hits a snag when he meets his end at the hands of the operative, who also orders the destruction of the broadcasting equipment. In a bold and provocative move, Mal fires upon a Reaver ship, igniting a chase that leads them straight to the Alliance fleet orbiting Mr. Universe's planet. Help! It's okay! I'm a leaf on the wind! What does that mean? Awaiting Serenity's emergence, the operative is taken aback as the ship leads a horde of Reaver vessels into the fray, and the ensuing battle is pure chaos, with the Alliance and Reaver fleets locked in a deadly skirmish. Amidst this interstellar turmoil, Wash manages to steer Serenity past the destruction, and though the operative ship is obliterated, he narrowly escapes in a pod, pursuing the crew to the planet. Now under fire, Serenity is struck by an electromagnetic pulse, disabling the power and sending the ship into a terrifying freefall. But in a heart-stopping moment, Wash miraculously restores emergency power, stabilizing their descent. Unfortunately, their relief is short-lived, with a Reaver Harpoon impaling Wash, who dies instantly. I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch out. In a state of shock, Zoe attempts to revive her husband, only to be pulled away by Malcolm in the nick of time, narrowly avoiding another harpoon. Fortifying themselves in a narrow corridor for a last stand against the Reavers, they buy time for Captain Mal to reach the transmitter. Well, I didn't plan on going out like this. I think we did right. But... I never planned anything. My one regret in all of this is never being with you. Hell with this. I'm gonna live. Mal discovers Mr. Universe's lifeless body, but a glimmer of hope remains. In his final moments, their friend had left a pre-recorded message with his robotic wife, revealing the existence of a secondary transmitter elsewhere in the complex. Meanwhile, the crew's defense against the Reaver's onslaught begins to falter. Zoe and Kaylee sustain injuries, forcing a tactical retreat, while the operative also learns of the secondary transmitter's location. In a tense moment, the crew struggle to seal the blast door, managing only a partial closure. A grenade from Jane provides a brief respite, but a new problem emerges when Simon's wounded by a stray bullet, leaving the injured without medical care. In a touching display of sibling loving courage, River comforts her brother, assuring him that it's her turn to take care of him. She then dives through the gap, 
retrieving Simon's medical bag and throws it to the crew before sealing the door from the other side, sacrificing herself to the Reavers to protect her family. The narrative crescendos to an exhilarating showdown between Malcolm and the formidable operative, while River teaches the Reavers she's not one to be messed with. I ain't gonna kill you. Hell, I'm gonna grant you greatest wish. I'm gonna show you a world without sin. The battle that ensues is a mix of strategy and brute force. And in a twist of fate, the operative's signature pressure point move fails against Mal, whose war injury led to the removal of the targeted nerve cluster. In a display of restraint and strategic thinking, Mal opts not to kill the operative. Instead, he immobilizes him, leaving him bound to witness the damning recording. Okay. Our clear. Do we have a kill order? Stand down. Returning to his crew, Mal is met with the grim assumption that River had died. However, the door opens to reveal her surrounded by defeated Reavers, alive and victorious. While the Alliance troops burst in, the operative, now enlightened by the Miranda recording, commands them to stand down. The moment marks a significant shift in the operative's allegiance and perspective. Make sure everything's secure. Could be bumpy. Always is. The film concludes on a somber note, with the crew burying their fallen comrades as Serenity undergoes repairs, courtesy of the operative. As they prepare to depart, the operative delivers a final piece of news. The Tams are no longer pursued by the Alliance, and their regime has been weakened, though they're not forgiving. I'd like to kill you myself if I see you again. You won't. There is nothing left to see. Mal's parting words to the operative, a warning of retribution should their paths cross again, is met with a promise from the man without an organization that they will not. The scenes that follow tie up loose ends with a blend of poignancy and humor. The long simmering romantic tension between Simon and Kay Lee, a major subplot in both the series and film, finally culminates with the two consummating their relationship. Grappling with the loss of her husband, Zoe shares a moment with Mal that is rich in metaphor and subtext. She comments on the condition of the ship. She's tore up plenty. Which will fly true. Referring to the physical state of serenity, but also reflecting her own resilience in the face of personal tragedy. Ready to get off this heap? Back to civilized life? I, uh, I don't know. Good answer. The closing moment has Mal taking his place at the helm, joined by an unexpected co-pilot in River. Her natural aptitude for piloting surprises Mal, but he imparts a crucial piece of wisdom. It's not the knowledge or expertise that keeps a ship in the air or turns it into a home, but love. The sentiment encapsulates the essence of the series and film, the bond the crew share, making Serenity more than just a ship, but a haven of freedom from Alliance oppression. Serenity was produced with a relatively modest budget of 39 million, especially for a sci-fi blockbuster. This required the filmmakers to be resourceful and inventive, and led to creative solutions in both set design, cinematography, and special effects. One of the distinctive examples of this is the use of handheld cameras, a technique borrowed from the Firefly series, which lent a sense of immediacy and realism to the film. When you hit Sean and it was really, I hope that's in, because it looked the way it was tilted. I grew up wanting to make big summer movies and uh, to have something truly thrilling and to take something away from it that is actually meaningful. That's something that I, I haven't seen enough of lately. The cinematography also often involved unconventional angles and framing, which added to the unique visual style, while conveying the vastness of space and the claustrophobia of the ship interiors, juxtaposing the film's varied settings. In addition to making effective use of CGI and practical effects, using a mixture of models and CGI for the spacecrafts. This was a little more fun to shoot than most of the action stuff I've done because literally 95% of the stunts are done with our actors. Joss is among the directors who are very visually motivated. I think some directors are looking only at character and dialogue and their actors and other directors are not paying enough attention to their dialogue. And with Joss, he's writing what he's seeing in his head. The production designer Serenity successfully expanded on the universe created in Firefly. The sets were designed to be functional and lived in, reflecting the character's rough and tumble lifestyle, and contrasting environments from the rustic towns, outposts, cities, to the sleek alliance facilities are well realized, contributing to the film's world building. We're all fans of the, of the verse that we've created, so we're sharing it between each other, and that can only grow, that can only grow forward. Uh, I, I, just I just can't wait for the rest of the world to jump on this spaceship. I really enjoyed the sound design and David Newman's musical score, which effectively complement the film's tone, blending orchestral elements with more rustic, frontier-like sounds that echo the film's space-western theme. 
first draft was really filled out. It's probably maybe 190 pages long. I, in fact, delivered it to the executives at Universal with the title, The Kitchen Sink. And then they said, this is really wonderful. Could you write a movie now? So he took it back into his office and took the scissors to it and produced the script. And he's an amazing writer, but this was an amazing accomplishment. The script stands as an excellent example of science fiction writing and execution of narrative structure, and Whedon masterfully transitions from the television series to a feature film format, balancing complex storytelling with character development and thematic depth. His ability to merge genres, create compelling dialogue, nail setup and payoff, and build a unique world is evident. And while it does cater to fans of the Firefly series, it remains accessible and engaging for newcomers, making it a well-rounded and effective screenplay. I feel like Serenity is the hardest script I've ever written because um, I can't give you, a, you know, the next episode. I can't give you a piece of TV and call it a movie. There has to be a reason to make this into a movie. And, um, and that took a long, long time. I love how sharp, witty, and often laced with humor the dialogue is. A hallmark of the creator's writing style, with every line and exchange reflecting the unique personalities of the characters and the scenarios they're in. The dialogue serves to efficiently convey the story's complex themes without resorting to exposition-heavy sequences, a challenging task given the film's dense narrative and job of serving as both a follow-up to the series and also a standalone film. Joss had a passion to do this thing, and he had the desire to make a movie and to keep going with this story and these characters, and there's an energy that comes with that that I think shows up on screen. His skill in balancing story, action, character, and humor is evident throughout, with Whedon managing to give each character their moment, ensuring that the ensemble cast works harmoniously. Josh is a very clever man. I like the way he writes. I like the way he envisions things. I like his ideas. And I think my job is the best because I get to come in and play the part, sweep away with all the credit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nathan Fillion's portrayal of Captain Malcolm Reynolds is one of depth and charisma. He skillfully balances the character's cynical outlook with a hidden sense of idealism. Fillion's strong screen presence and ability to deliver witty dialogue make him a compelling lead, and he nails the character's arc in the film about finding a cause worth fighting for, while reigniting a passion he thought he'd lost after the Battle of Serenity Valley. It was like visiting with friends that I had not seen in so long, and, and to hear the rhythms and know what the voices were, instead of just a big question mark here, oh, I wonder who's going to play that, oh, I wonder who... It was just like a big party all over again. All of us have this energy that, that we sort of feed off each other, and we get kind of loopy at the end of the day. Gina Therese makes Zoe a formidable yet compassionate warrior. She brings her nuanced strength to the character, effectively portraying both her fierce loyalty and her emotional vulnerability. You know, we have good interaction, we know each other well, and I think it translates, you know. That stuff is just already there, and then the lines and all of what we have to do in the scene comes next. So it's, it makes it a lot easier, a lot more fun. When it comes to Alan Tudchik, his performance brings comedic timing and warmth to Wash. He carries a light-heartedness that balances the more intense moments, with his portrayal of Wash's love for Zoe adding a tender dimension to his character. We're all just laughing and joking around right before we take. Yesterday we were shooting something up on the bridge where like the Reaver ships are coming in and we're all petrified and we're already rolling. Two seconds before Joss calls action, Nathan makes a crack. <laughs> <laughs> we all crack up. We're like, crap, okay, I gotta straighten up my face. Marina Baccarin's performance as Inara is characterized by its elegance and complexity. She perfectly captures Inara's internal conflict between her feelings for Mal and her independent life as a companion, and Baccarin's subtle expressions convey much of Inara's unspoken emotions. Joss Whedon, my hero, he entrusted a character to me that I love, and this is a part and project that needed to continue to be told, and here we are. Shiny, let's be bad guys. Adam Baldwin's Jane provides comic relief and a rough edge to the crew, with the actor portraying a character as both intimidating, loyal, and unexpectedly humorous. Gina said her first line, and Nathan said his first line. We were all like, <laughs> you know, it's just so wild, because you just don't think that you're ever going to hear that character say anything else. And it was just so great to be there and to have this whole new thing to look forward to and to work on. Joss is brilliant. I mean, what can you say? He's, he's so smart, and he's very humble about it, and he's very sweet, and he's very loving, and I luckily get to see that side of him a lot. Jill State brings a delightful innocence and optimism to her role as Kay Lee. Her portrayal is heartwarming and provides a contrast to the darker elements of the film, and State's chemistry with the cast, especially with Sean Mayer, is palpable. The script capturing her innocence and her growth into a more assertive and confident individual. 
That was the thing I was most excited about with the film was to get back with this group of people that I genuinely adore and genuinely respect. I mean, not to toot anybody's horns, but I think they're some of the most talented actors that I've ever worked with. While more subdued than the others, Sean Mayer's portrayal of Simon Tam is well executed, capturing the character's protective nature and his evolution throughout the series into the film. Mayer effectively conveys Simon's dedication to his sister River and his growing affection for Kay Lee. And the script delves into his internal conflict between his medical ethics and the desperateness of their situation. Showcasing his growth from a sheltered doctor to a key member of the crew is willing to fight for his new family. When we went to Universal to do our first table read, it was scary because we hadn't been those characters for a long time. But everybody came back as if they had never left. Everyone still had their mannerisms, the way they played the characters before. Everybody tells me how spoiled I am. They say, it will never be like this again. Enjoy it while it lasts. You'll never be this happy and you'll never be with a cast that loves each other so much. But I hope this is the beginning. I hope I get to be on set with Joss a hundred times more. He's the best. Summer Galau's performance brings a grace, intensity, and physicality to River. She portrays the character's vulnerability and strength with a compelling presence, making her character's transformation one of the highlights of the film. Nathan has the most inexhaustible energy for entertaining that I've been around, and is really, really funny. He is constantly distracting. Nathan is quite a distraction. <sighs> it's all lies. Ron Glass brings a dignified and calming presence to his role as Shepard Pook. His portrayal adding a moral and philosophical depth to the film, providing a counterbalance to the more action-oriented characters. Joss is a very inspirational filmmaker, and I've known him for a long time, and I know how talented he is. And in a town where there are a lot of talented people, I've never met anybody that works harder. While Chiwetel Ayafor's performance as the operative is one of quiet intensity, he brings a certain gravitas to the role, portraying the operative as a thoughtful, complex, yet ruthless antagonist that undergoes one of the most significant transformations. I think the thing that's helped my work is that, uh, yes, I am an artist, I have things to say, etc., etc., suffering, blah, 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 but at the same time, I'm a fan. The production is a testament to the effectiveness of innovative filmmaking techniques, especially when working within budgetary constraints. And the film's unique visual style, combined with its creative use of effects, practical stunts, and detailed world building, helped it become a beloved cult classic. The film successfully translates the beloved Firefly series into a cinematic experience while retaining its heart and spirit, and I was really glad to see a bittersweet conclusion to one of my favorite shows of all time. Doctor, if anything happens to her, anything at all, I swear to you, I will get very choked up. Honestly, there could be tears. With that said, that's all for today, folks. A huge thanks to everyone that requested we cover Serenity. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and if there's anything else you'd like for me to cover, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.